What up? Tyler here from Tarver Academy. If you could please subscribe. I just kicked my rug. We are doing another edition of Tarver Book Club. Tarver Book Club. Tarver Book Club. I should be able to say my the title of my own show. So today I'm really excited. Um, as you can tell from me being over the top excited. I don't know what we're yelling about. I'm really excited that I'm getting the opportunity. I'm getting the opportunity. I can, I can make whatever videos I want. I know I do what I want. I'm excited that I'm getting to review a book from an author that I, I've respected for a really long time. His name is Ronnie Clark. Ron Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no. Uh, okay, so I just remember Ron Clark likes it when you dress nicer and I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's unacceptable. Oh, well let me, I gotta, I gotta fancy it up a little bit. No dirt, don't try to church it up. Son. Joe Dierte. Don't try and church it up, son. Okay. Hey. I'm doing this because Ron Clark, he, he always like, dresses like super nice, except for when he's in Survivor. And I want to keep power as much as I can. You know, he's adapt, survive, win. What's the, what's the Survivor thing? I've referenced it enough, I should know. Okay. Again, I'm a big fan of Ron Clark. If you have heard of Ron Clark and you're in education, it's probably because of the Ron Clark Academy. If you're not in education, then you probably know him from the Matthew Perry movie that came out in the 2000-somethings called Ron Clark Story, I think. Mr. Clark? Yeah. Is you gonna be our new teacher? So I remember when that came out, I was like, oh, that's great. And I kind of thought I might go into education to be a teacher, and I, uh, I did. I have really, really liked his material for a long time. He had a book called The Essential 55 that came out, and about 55 rules. Uh, that you can use in your classroom. And then he had another one. It was like his rules for his class. The Excellent Eleven. And you may be thinking, Tyler, I've seen you speak at stuff. You talk about having something called the Phenomenal Nine. I know you have your like, first day of class and syllabus. Like, here are the rules, whatever. I just got something called Phenomenal Nine. Yeah, I stole it from Ron Clark. I mean, I didn't steal it. Read his books. Quit listening to this. Just go read all of his books. They're very good. I'll wait. Welcome back. Now that you've read all the Ron Clark books, Let's talk about the book club version of Move Your Bus. Move that bus! Move that bus! Ty Pennington here. On to business, shall we? Three W's. See what I did there? Three and the W? It's fine. It's fine. We'll be here all week. What? Who's this for? This is for anyone in business or education. Since he's an educator, people think, oh, look, it's for educators. No, it's for anybody. If you're a leader, it's good for, um, it's good for identifying who you have in your company and where you should place your time. And then if you're an employee, it's good for recognizing what you are. And if you don't have the self-awareness to know, you should definitely ask an administrator that you trust or a friend that doesn't mind telling you the truth because it could be hard to hear for a lot of people. I know, because I've told people and I've not told people when they've asked me because some people I think can take it and some people don't. What? What will it do for you? But if you're an employee, it'll help you recognize where you are and you can see why you are getting perks or why you're getting passed over for those jobs. We've done that before, it happens, it happens. If you're not in one of these categories that people want to move into that position, this is why. It's not about, oh, I'll stuck around alone. I've been at this school for 30 years. Yeah, but what have you done? Just because I've you know, played basketball since second grade doesn't mean I'm better than some 18 year old who's getting a D1 scholarship. Well, I've been playing basketball longer, I should've gotten a D1 scholarship. It's not about how long you do something, it's about how good you are at it. That's not the book, that's the Tyler Tarver original. Tyler Tarver original. Why do I keep pointing? Why? 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 Third W, why should you read it? It's a great breakdown of how businesses and schools run and who runs them, who makes them move forward. No. Gosh, we do a lot of like silent head movements, Tyler. Get it together. TLDR. Don't have time to read this phenomenal book? You should. There are five key people in an organization. There's the driver. That's the person who moves it. They, they, they create the vision. That's the person, a superintendent, if you will. Maybe the board uh, principal of a building. Those are the people that, that drive the vision of the organization. Driver, and then you got your runners. Runners are the ones that just pick up and run with anything. They take on any task. Um, a lot of times they'll take on tasks without you asking. They're the ones that are always doing something. Next will be the, the joggers. They're the people that are gonna keep pace. They're gonna do a lot, but not near what the runners can do. I was running. Then you've got your walkers. These are the people that just kind of keep the pace. You know, this is the term like, oh, just drawing a paycheck. You're just doing what's expected of you. You're not trying to excel, you're not trying to move forward, but you're not trying to be the ones dragging everybody behind. You're the walkers. Coral! <laughs> It's overused, but I'd used it anyways. Then you've got your riders. They're dead weight. They're the ones that every faculty meeting you're in, they're sitting in the back just, ugh. 
We gotta do this. They're the kind of person that when I was an administrator, before we went into meetings, we knew who would hate it. And we knew their facial expressions. We knew most of the questions or comments they would make, whether out loud or remember under the breath of their brand. These are your riders, okay? You could literally say, hey guys, we're gonna take Fridays off and give everybody an extra thousand dollars a week. And they would find something to complain about. Oh, what am I supposed to do with my kids now on Fridays? Like, they're your riders. She just says I can't learn, so I should go with the trash. Now, one of the key things that Mr. Clark talks about in the book is your runners might be doing a hundred things and they're gonna mess up four or five. They're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna do things without you that you may have not have done if you were in their position, but you don't wanna hinder them running because then they're gonna slow down and become joggers or maybe even walkers, worst case scenario. And so you wanna keep them running and just know that five out of a hundred things they're gonna do different than you would, or they might even just mess up, but they're still doing 95 things great. Whereas your joggers might do, you know, five to 10 things, but not mess up on any, but they're still only doing at most 10 things. I say at most, it's, a, it's a, num a fabricated number, but they're not doing near the percent that the runners are. Let the runners run. And this is a problem that I feel so many administrators and bosses fall into, is they want to focus their they, they think they have to focus their time in pulling up the riders and the walkers. It's, it's like, you, you think you've got to like, okay, we've got these people, they're doing fine, let's just let them keep going, but we need to bring everybody else up here. Ron talks about this, I'm saying Ron, I don't know him by name. Mr. Clark talks about this in the book. He says, we've got people at the back and we're trying to spin and we're just trying to move the needle just a little bit, like take a, a rider to a walker or a walker to a jogger. But really in the end, they're not gonna move like, oh, I'm a rider, I saw the light. I saw the light. Good just now they're one of your runners. No, people are pretty much gonna be what they are. Not many jump two or three spots ahead of where they were. Focus your time on the runners. Invest in them because when they're running, think of it like in the Flintstones, you know, whoever's running the fastest, they're gonna move the whole organization forward and everybody else is gonna be catching up because it changes that that middle, that standard that the walkers are doing, you know, the are the standard. It's gonna move it a little bit faster. And so focus your time on the runners. And here's another thing, this is to administrators, because I know I've been an administrator, I've been to where it's like, oh, we can't send them on this trip, or we can't send them to this PD out of state, or whatever it is, because we haven't sent so-and-so in so long. And I've had teachers come up and be like, why is it always blank, blank, and blank that gets to go and not me? Because they're doing more. Why should we not reward the people that are accomplishing more, doing stuff without asking, having a positive attitude, they're energetic, they're making a difference, as opposed to you just like sitting in your class and just doing enough not to get in trouble. Why should you get rewarded for that? That's great advice. Reward your runners, guys. It moves everything better and it encourages the people that are actually getting 90% of the stuff in your organization done. Man, I talk too fast. And too loud, my kids are sleeping. <laughs> if you don't like where you are, pick up your pace. That's good, I don't know if that's a direct quote from the book. If not, Mr. Clark, you can have that. Golden nugget is, no excuses, only solutions. That's four words right there. You're thinking that doesn't really apply to the stuff you did. I don't know. I put it in my notes when I was reading the book as a good quote, okay? So, sue me. Express lane, summarize the book in 10 words or less. Empower your best and you'll do more. Mmm, that's seven. If I could summarize this book in one emoji, I think it's gonna be the buzz that's not it, so ping, the goat. Ron Clark, he's great. Education goat. See what I did there? No? Okay. Well, thank you for joining us for Tarver Book Club. It's been a doozy. I'm sweating in this jacket. Shirt, more than a number. You guys, thanks for tuning in. If you would subscribe, share it to somebody that you think might like it. Uh, put in the comments whatever you think about, thought about the book. If you've read it, if not, tell me what book we should do next. Thank you guys for coming. Subscribe, stay fresh, stay fierce. Why do I do that? I do it as a joke, but I'm still doing it. Stay fierce, stay fierce, everybody. Peace, guys. Later. This jacket makes me feel so powerful. Run, Forrest, run away! Oh, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so forgetful. What's my name again?